Oh wow. I need this caffeine to kick in. Look at all this caffeine. I'm still tired. Oh hello folks. Welcome back. I'm the one the only Hobo Tom. And if I look a little bit run down, it's because I've been working, I think, for Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Monday. Four days straight. And I still have I know until Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's gonna be rough. Just for you folks, um, because I'm only doing I might be doing a third video. I'm not too sure. I'll see how things go timing wise. Maybe I'll find some, find some time on Wednesday for an NXT takeover video or um pr predictions. That's that's what I'm looking for. Maybe I might do that Wednesday night after I get a whole bunch of other stuff done. But we'll see. Those only take ten minutes. So again, I'll probably only have three videos. I kind of give you guys my schedule. It'll be today, Monday, uh, maybe Wednesday, and hopefully Friday. Oh, the pay to he do Friday. And then it'll, ne next week it'll be a little bit more normal, at least. It'll be Monday, which whichever I can catch, Impact, and or AEW. Friday Smackdown, and for you, my viewing audience, I'm going to have a bonus feature. Let's show you about when Hobo Tom goes to the races. Well, that should be interesting. But this mo this video is not about races. This, 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 is, this is supposed to be about wrestling? Wait a second. This video is about, well, I'll get to that. Tranquilo. I do have some shout-outs to give. I'd like to thank everyone for seeing me on Discord and chatting with me. It's very much appreciated. Just remember, if I do catch you on Discord and you kind of somewhat respond to me, or at least make a reference to any of any probably my more mundane comments I leave, you get a shout-out. Also, hopefully, I think sometime in March, NXT is coming back into town. And you can see this guy, the one, the only, Hobo Tom, here at Daytona Beach for the NXT event. Again, as always, I'll have my kind of recap and review of it. So, actually, let me open something up here. Let's see here. Where is it? So, so I actually somewhat know when, what I'm doing now. Let's see, no, not that. That's what I want. I'm going to have to start deleting stuff. Delete! Let's see here. A Y Y M L A O. I think that's like an acronym for something. You get a six count.
goes for Sahara. Roosh, you sir are an air drum, air guitar player. <laughs> Fence's penis. Yes, you made me say it. You, sir, are listening to your briefcase boombox. And you know what, sir, with a name like mine, you can just crawl right out of here. <laughs> Dennis Reynolds, you, sir, in that dirty pen. And kidding fish, you sir are a member of the El Generico band. And with all that being said, well, Raw was interesting. I'm actually going to try something. Probably going to get a lot of flack for it. I don't know why. But, you know, normally when you turn into a wrestling event, you watch this. But instead, for Monday Night Raw, they came out with what I am now calling, if you did not see the opening of the video, the cult of Rollins. 
because instead of seeing the video, something from like the video I just showed you, we get something like this. World. And so now I've got to assume that, man, they were in a depression, that they were in a mourning state. In fact, in Jeremiah, uh, before verse 11, he says, listen, I want you to eat. I want you to drink. I want you, I want you to, to, to marry because, listen, you're going to be here for a while. And I believe that he was saying that is because, man, that people were repenting and people were upset. They're saying, God, you know, how could you do this to me? God, how could you do this to our family? How could you do this to our nation? Yeah, not exactly what I was expecting. They have Seth Rollins. Um, for some reason, he's like preaching and, and saying you all can be saved and just because of sacrifices and don't be a martyr. Uh, yeah, not necessarily my cup of tea. Uh. See, things like this, when I see this, actually makes me want to tune out to wrestling for a while or watch just Impact, AEW, and SmackDown. Because SmackDown, even though a lot of people say bad stuff about it, at least they're, they're not doing that. It's kind of weird. And then all of a sudden, of course, it leads to a big scrap. Which is weird for 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 preaching and nonviolence and turning other cheeks, but yet he stomps people. I don't know. So, start, so then the first official match, finally, you get Becky Lynch versus Oscar, and oh boy, this was a fun one. Starts off as a classic wrestling match to start off. However, Becky Lynch has been talking to her boyfriend Seth Rollins a little bit too much because now it turned into a headlock mania. Headlock Mania is not fun. It didn't last too long because then eventually they just started to run the ropes and they were just running back and forth. Becky's a little bit slow on the ropes. Asuka's freaking quick. Whoa. Uh, Kyrie Sane acts as a distraction again that leads to Becky Lynch getting rear viewed. <laughs> I'd like to be rear viewed by Asuka. That would be pretty cool. I'd like to be rear viewed by Kyrie Sane too. I'd like to be doubled. Both Asuka and Kyrie Sane. That's a whole other issue, though. That, that can wait for a few more weeks for Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras celebration. Yep, there's going to be a special video again for Mardi Gras. There always is. Mardi Gras is the happiest time of the year. Because it's the time before Lent starts. But you get to do whatever. Then you spend 40 days making up for it. And then Asuka, uh, Becky Lynch makes a brief comeback, but she gets the poor man's version of the GTS by Asuka. Onto Becky Lynch. Carrie gets involved. She gets splashed for her efforts. Oh, it was crazy. And taking all these bombs. And then Becky Lynch tries to put the disarm her on Asuka on the rope, which is kind of cool looking. It's almost like the tarantula, but it's a disarmor using the ropes. I like that, the creative use of the ring. And then, oh, Asuka got hit with that scorpion death drop. And of course, Asuka hit the superplex. Oh. And then Asuka went to a Jujikatami, that's a straight armbar, transitioned that into a triangle choke, and Becky tried to pick her up for a powerbomb. Becky Lynch has to work on her squats and her back muscle a little bit more, though, because she not exactly got it up. She missed a leg drop. Asuka did a couple attempts at the Asuka lock and a bunch of roll-offs. It was some weird out of nowhere finish. It was just like, the rock bottom. I hate to say it, Becky, you're no rock. Can you smell what Becky is cooking? It's probably cooking up cabbage and corned beef. A lot of potatoes. And having a pint to go with it. But so this match actually was really good. For the most part, I mean, once they got over Headlock Mania and said, well, we might as well have a wrestling match now. They could have done so much more so with the ending. If they didn't waste time doing Headlock Mania. But still, though, this is a surf and turf match. Then Shayna Baszler comes out. He blindsides Becky. 
she removes her mouth guard and like bites Necky, Becky on the neck? Wait a second. If I bit someone right along here, that's the jugular vein, the carotid artery. First of all, you're bleeding like a stuffed pig. Second of all, if you get to the carotid artery, you have like six seconds before you bleed out. I want to, and, and feel free to correct me, any of those in the real medical field. I always thought it's about a six second bleed out. If you, if you cut, if you sever the carotid artery, I think the jugular vein, eh, it's just an extra six seconds. 12 seconds though, you're not going to be conscious. And those EMTs, if they're treating any neck, Slashes or open wounds on the neck. I would think they would like say, No, we have to stop the pressure. We have to hold you down and stop said pressure. Because honestly, it looked like that Jen and Bays were just like a bite out of a blood capsule and let it run all over Becky's neck, which is weird. Until Becky leans, that hot blood Irish woman. Take the blade across her forehead and have a have a roughed up forehead. If you can't, her forehead's too smooth, baby. Uh, Becky Lynch's forehead is as smooth as a baby's bottom. But maybe Seth likes him that way. Who knows what Seth likes? Seth be a preacher man now. So Seth's the Messiah. Is Becky Lynch now the Virgin Rebecca? Indeed. Uh, then we have uh, Mojo Rally taking uh, and Riddick Moss taking on the Street Profits. Street Profits, they show up, dance, and they start the match. And whoa, -ho, Riddick Moss turns on Mojo Rally. I don't even know when this happened. Like the Street Profits were still doing their answers about we want the smoke, we want smoke. Next thing I know, Riddick Moss, like. Clocked and then rolled up Mojo Rally, and Riddick Moss, really at the start of their match, became the 24/7 champion. Oh, Riddick Moss! Congratulations, sir! You've moved up in the world from NXT Jobber to a 24/7 champion. At least they're doing something with that ridiculous title, and they're kind of moving around to people. Riddick Moss has been around NXT for a long time. He probably deserved it. And that was a ham sandwich of a match. Then we have then when they showed Becky in the back refusing medical assistance. And and listen, I, I don't know who the idiot ambulance driver is that left the keys in the ignition in the ambulance, but anyone who's bleeding profusely should never ever Drive an ambulance. That just seems bad. In fact, someone should be fired. Son of a bitch. Fire. I can't fire me. You can't fire me because I quit. I don't know. That, that's, that's, that's a hard one to the boss. Because you know she just drove it behind the trucks. She's not driving herself to the ambulance. <laughs> I'm sure the police would pick that up so, sometime. Uh, then we have the VIP lounge with MVP and Drew McIntyre. Yep, MVP said a whole bunch of wrong things. But Drew McIntyre did get his chance to point it to the WrestleMania sign. But uh, MVP said the wrong things, too much of it. So Drew McIntyre just headbutted him. Three, two, one, Claymore! MVP took that bump like a champ. It's good to see him do that. Then there was a uh, Randy Orton and Edge recap about what happened. Then we have Angel Garza with Zelina Vega. Ooh, I'll tell you what, Zelina Vega got up on that got up in that ring. And ooh, Zelina Vega's little booty was there. O M G, Vega has booty. And he was taking on Cedric Alexander, but that really didn't happen for a while. Because Umberto Carrillo came in and started to beat up Angel Garza. We have a good old-fashioned cousin fight going on, folks. 
two cousins that don't like each other. They just want to each other for a while. And it's somewhat over a woman, which is kind of, I guess that makes sense. I dig it. So Cedric's just there, sitting on the top rope, waving to the fans like, yep, they're like, hey, you got to get involved. He's like, Phew. I'm not getting involved with this. Eventually, Umberto Crillo, because his music, Dalegas, it's, and he gets escorted out by referees. Cedric, he's just like, whatever. Uh, Cedric reversed some move to start off with, and wow, that was amazing. Um, he did get uh, Cedric caught drop kick on Angel Garza. Gonna catch drop kicks, amazing. And then, however, when they went to the outside, Cedric tried to fly for the splash. Angel Garza instead caught him with a drop kick, and then of course, whoo, the pants came off. And Angel Garza's in his trunks, did the wing clipper. That's it. Match over. This was actually fun, though. I like the way his forwarding was happening between Angel Garza and Alberto Carrillo. This was a good cheeseburger match. Then Rhea Ripley showed up for an interview. Yeah, it is what it was. And Bobby Lashley and Lana. Oh, my folks. Lana's looking mighty shiny in that dress. They give a quick little promo. And for some reason, Sarah Logan comes out. It confronts Rhea Ripley. It's like, oh, they have a match. Sarah Logan versus Rhea Ripley. Who are you? And then Charlotte Fleur shows up in an evening dress. It's a six-match squash. Listen. Sarah Logan, take notes from Dana Brooke. When Dana Brooke tried this with Ronda Rousey, she actually did it better. So because I don't want to be a household name. Sarah Logan, you're not a household name. At least Dana Brooke for a while. And she came, she came up before Sarah Logan, too. And Dana Brooke's just dating Batista. So, hey, Dana, you ever get tired of... Uh, Batista, I'm here okay. Especially for Valentine's Day. But Sarah Logan's married. So... Oh, well. Uh, again, it was like a six-move squash. They tried to recapture the magic. Dana Brooke kind of caught in a bottle. This is a can of soup. Then we have Bobby Lashley and Ricochet. And while Ricochet is doing his promo in the back, uh, we just hear the crowd chanting, Rusev Day, Rusev Day. And by the way, Lana wears white. Lana has to be very careful about the size of her shimmer dress. Because, yep, you can see all of Lana, baby. Baby, 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 baby. Come on. Um, and then Ricochet he goes right after Bobby Lashley, which is Bobby Lashley is again for the most part too powerful. Until Ricochet says, "You know what? I am the faster individual. I'm going to start flying and running all over the place." And that's when Ricochet really takes control. And it seems like he's not doing as much flippy stuff as he did in Lucha Underground. I miss the Ricochet who was Prince Puma. I want Prince Puma Ricochet back. Right now, Ricochet's. I even want NXT Ricochet or New Japan Ricochet. But Ricochet's really having to slow himself down for the WWE style. Although he does hit a whole bunch of combo moves. Ricochet first hit the reverse kick, then the rolling drop kick, a crossbody, and that led to the 630. Uh, oh, he misjudged that a little bit because he fell right on the pectorals and ribcage and chest of one Bobby Lashley. That could be very ugly. He did that 6.30. He landed right on those ribs. Instead of the tummy. Those ribs don't give, baby. Ribs break. Ouch. You know, this was really fun. It served its purpose. Ricochet gets the... He, he defended his uh, mat, his spot in the match against Brock Lesnar for the Super Showdown, which will be on the 27th, I think. 
So I might be able to give you a recap of that. I can't live stream, I can't live stream for like another month and a uh, yeah, about a month and a half. And I'll be back live. And then you'll hear me all over the place. So that was pretty cool. That was again a good cheeseburger match. Then there's a Randy Orton promo. Oh, Randy Orton still gives best promos. Then Matt Hardy said, must be deleted, even though I hated Edge because he committed adultery with Lita. And Lita was a very bad woman. But it led to Matt Hardy marrying Rebby Hardy, who I just saw her in a video. She has big boobies. And she's a lot prettier looking than Lita, especially in the face. Rebby Hardy. Matt, sir, you're definitely punching above your weight class with her. And, of course, Randy Orton RKO's because Matt jumps Randy. Randy RKO's him out of nowhere. He has that, that look. What did I do? I'm not done yet. <laughs> Just the chairs. Probably, again, the, the safest chair shot in the world. That was good stuff. Then Ruby Riot comes out. Ruby Riot. I'm still kind of upset with her because she wouldn't acknowledge that she was Heidi Lovelace. You can say it. All the marks know that you were Heidi Lovelace and not some silly cousin. You have to take cues from Cassius Ono, who says, "Oh, you remember me as as Chris Hero." Ah, awesome. And Kyrie Sane, I know was. I think Kyrie Hojo. And stardom, because I had the picture of her, and she looked absolutely shocked, tickled, and giddy that that someone remembered that she wrestled in stardom. It was always cool to see that response. I say, oh, that's my cousin. Boo, Ruby Riot. Then we have Alistair Black taking on Akira Tozawa. I give I give Akira Tozawa some credit. He actually got a drop kick in. He got some offense in, which is really good. However, Alistair Black got one pop up knee. Black Mass. Wait a second. There's all a bunch of religious themes here in Raw. A preacher, a martyr, being crucified by the audience. Trying to save people. A Black Mass? Whoa! Yeah, I've never liked it when WWE went on these weird tangents. But enough about that. Uh, so Alistair Black does Black Mass with Akira Tozawa after the, after the pop-up knee. I give Akira Tozawa some great. He got his offense and took his licks. This was a ham sandwich. Then Alistair Black cuts a promo. He mentioned the cage. I hope he takes on Rowan soon. And we all get to, what's in the cage? I still say it's a skunk. Then Becky Lynch is back. I don't know. Again, if you're bleeding from the neck, they really shouldn't release you from the hospital. Then we have Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, and the Viking Raiders taking on what I shall call the Cult of Rollins. They'll be, to begin the match, a brawl ensues. Then poor Buddy Murphy. Buddy Murphy gets, gets, gets the Aussie knocked out of him. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. I wonder what, I think, because I saw this, someone asked what's happening to the Iconics. I think they went back to Australia because they still have family in Australia. And Australia, I think, is still going through its whole nasty wildfire thing. So I think they went back to Australia for a little bit to kind of take care of things down under. Like, <laughs> cause they come from the land down under. Do, 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 do. Women fight on women asunder. They heard a run on under. I met a man from Brussels. He was six foot tall and full of muscles. Something with a Vegemite sandwich. He said, but I come from the land down under. Terrible songs that I cannot copyright. Violate me for that, at least. 
That's good. That's a terrible rendition. Maybe for for some other maybe for no, I don't know. I have to figure out what I'm doing. That's okay. So I think they're in land down under. Um KO does a Vader elbow drop and tells Seth to suck it multiple times. Kevin Owens is so anime in the ring. Again, if you ever become a pro usher, take his advice and just talk, talk, talk. Uh Akum, he has a meh spine buster pretty good. Eventually all four of them beat up Kevin Owens. Samoa Joe gets a hot tag and then becomes a typical spot fest for any eight man tag. Uh Kevin Owens sent on everyone. That leaves Samoa Joe in the ring with Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy. Seth makes the uh, Murphy makes the blind tag. But Samoa Joe's smart. He saw that. Puts the Coquina clutch on some Murphy. Murphy's about ready to pass out. Uh, Aikman Resort distract the refs. Seth stomps Samoa Joe. And Buddy Murphy picks up the win at Seth's Seth's help. And that was and that was a fun match. That was a good cheeseburger match. That was happening. Um, that was Monday Night Raw. Again, I don't like the fact that they're doing all these weird angles. I don't think I liked that before, and I don't necessarily like it now. So, overall, it was a cheeseburger of a show. So, the good news, probably either tomorrow, tomorrow night, or at latest Wednesday, I'll put up my predictions for NXT TakeOver Portland. And then I'll have my video up probably the Thursday to get ready for Valentine's Day. The This one goes out to all the ladies. Special. Do my Friday Night Smackdown. And then Monday I'll probably be a double.